from nerve development to vision. The eye movement disorders trabismus, characterized by eye misalignment, and nystagmus, involuntary oscillation of the eyes, together affect up to 5% of the population. Accommodative esotropia is one of the most common types of strabismus in children, characterized by an inward deviation of the eyes that improves with glasses. Early detection of esotropia is essential, and lack of treatment can result in severe and long-term visual damage. Children with a subtype of accommodative esotropia have traditionally been treated with bifocal glasses to correct both distance and close vision. However, they are more expensive than single-vision glasses and are often more difficult for young children to get used to. Dr. Mary Whitman at the Boston Children's Hospital, USA, questioned this approach. Her retrospective study of 180 children found similar improvement and development of depth perception after treatment with single vision, only distance correction, or bifocal glasses, as well as a lower risk of surgery. This first demonstration that single vision lenses are preferable now forms the basis of recommendations for the treatment of accommodative esotropia by the American Academy of Ophthalmology. In other work, Dr. Whitman conducted a genetic association study of comitant esotropia in which the deviation of the eyes remains the same in all directions. Here, she identified that three rare recurrent DNA duplications, repeated stretches of DNA, increase risk, representing an important step forward in understanding the pathophysiology of strabismus. Although a high level of control over eye movement is necessary for sharp vision, little is known about the mechanisms underlying the development of the ocular motor system. Eye movements are controlled by six extraocular muscles, EOMs, that are innervated by three cranial nerves. Typically, the neuron axons that are responsible for signal transmission emerge from the brainstem, assembling into a nerve that stretches across the brain to reach the orbit and its corresponding EOM. Unfortunately, many disruptions can occur along the way, and previous studies suggested EOMs may be involved. Intrigued by this, Dr. Whitman generated a new line of genetically modified mice that lacked EOMs and expressed green fluorescent protein in the ocular motor nerves, responsible for motor action of the eyes and eyelids, allowing scientists to temporarily and spatially follow the development of nerves in healthy mice embryos and those lacking EOMs. Orbital dissections and imaging techniques provided precise images. Findings highlighted the local role of EOMs in guiding the three ocular motor nerves in finalizing their trajectory to the correct EOM. Whether EOMs act through direct contact or are mediated through diffusible cues remains to be determined, and Dr. Whitman is pursuing this research further. Although innervation of the EOMs relies on only three cranial nerves, highly complex mechanisms allow cranial nerves to reach their designated muscle. Unfortunately, the study of this nerve guidance has been hampered by technical challenges. However, Dr. Whitman has developed an embryonic slice culture technique allowing time-lapse imaging of the developing nerve while maintaining an intact microenvironment. This approach has allowed Dr. Whitman's investigation of the role of the CXCR4 receptor and its ligand CXCL12 on CN3 ocular motor nerve development. Importantly, adding a CXCR4 inhibitor in slice culture media led CN3 to grow toward the back from the ocular motor nucleus rather than toward the front, and this was confirmed in genetically modified mice. Further work illustrated the importance of the ACKR3 gene, which regulates CXCR4, CXCL12, for the proper development of ocular motor nerves in both mice and humans. Ongoing work by Dr. Whitman continues to uncover the developmental mechanisms of the ocular motor system. Always innovative, her research is opening doors to groundbreaking medical innovation.